Welcome, welcome to One Minute Crypto. I'm your host, Carlos, and today I want to talk about the exact formula that goes into calculating how much you need to pay in fees on a Bitcoin transaction. I've seen a lot of posts recently celebrating, hey, I was able to pay so little in fees and my transaction confirmed so quickly. But actually, what people don't realize is that the fee is not dependent on the number of Bitcoins you send. It's actually dependent on the size of the Bitcoin transaction. And size is not Bitcoins, it's the number of input and outputs that go into the transaction. I'm going to give you the exact formula so you can calculate the size of your own transactions here in this video. But first, I want to thank our sponsor because this episode is proudly sponsored by KeepKey, a USB hardware wallet that plugs into your computer to keep your cryptocurrency safe. This little guy stores your private keys directly on it, so even if your computer gets a virus, your funds are still secure. Check him out at KeepKey.com. So like I was saying, the size of a transaction is based on the number of inputs and outputs. Now typically when you're sending a Bitcoin transaction, you're only going to have one output because you're sending it to one person, either yourself for a transfer or an exchange or another person or business. But you actually need a second output. You're typically going to have two outputs because you're not sending all of the Bitcoins that are involved in the transaction. You need some as change. Take for example, if you've got one Bitcoin in an address and you want to send 0.005, you can't just send 0.005 and have that be your one output. The transaction needs to have all of the Bitcoins accounted for. So you're going to have 0.005 going to the destination and then 0.995, the remaining amount, going to a different destination that you control. That's called the change address. So it's very, very common to have two outputs, one for the person you're paying and one for yourself as a change address. So now we know there's two outputs. How many inputs are there going to be? Well, that just depends on how your Bitcoins are spread out. Inputs do not mean source addresses. It actually means source unspent transaction outputs or UTXOs, which means every time you're paid Bitcoin, that's one input. So if you receive five payments, you've got those in five different UTXOs. If you want to go send that all at once, your transaction has five inputs, and that's going to make a large transaction which costs more in fees. So here's the exact formula. It's the number of inputs times 148 bytes. Now typically that's going to be one or two inputs, but if you have received a lot of Bitcoin at a lot of different times, it'll be more. And then you add the number of outputs times 34 bytes. Now, this is the bulk of the transaction. The number of inputs, the number of outputs here being multiplied by these numbers makes up the huge majority of the size. After you've done that, you add 10 more bytes and then plus or minus the number of inputs in bytes. So if you've got two inputs and two outputs, that's 2 times 148 plus 2 times 34 plus 10. And then maybe you're going to add two more for the two extra inputs. That's because some input addresses are a little bit shorter than others. And so you do have that slight variance. But basically, the number of bytes is hugely based on the number of inputs. You can see that multiplier 148 is much bigger than the 34 multiplier. So the best way to keep your fees down is to limit the number of inputs that you're using in the transaction. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below the video. I'd love to help you out in any way I can. I'm Kronos. Thanks for watching.